Welcome back to Ring the Alarm. I'm Jackie G here with my mentor and friend High Voltage. And today we're going to talk to you about how the sugar industry has hijacked our holidays. That's including Christmas, Easter, Valentine's Day, and Halloween. But first, let's go back to one of our previous episodes where we mentioned the documentary Sugar Blues that was filmed by a film crew in Czechoslovakia that has followed High Voltage for the past few years and is premiering in Copenhagen. So during the time that Sugar Blues was filmed, Fed Up was also filmed, the, the documentary about how sugar is impacting the world on a ridiculous scale. So let's show you one of the clips that Fed Up has taken of Voltage being one of the solutions to the problem that we're facing today. Take a look. Sugar is a drug to millions of kids. And you know, our goal is to try to get sugar out of the schools. Energy Up was built on very much the principles of AA. Because once I got sober, I realized my eating behavior was exactly like my drug behavior. And I recognized what it did to my brain. And this was 30 years ago, and it was unheard of to say that food could be addictive or sugar and processed foods. But I recognized it back then and started building the program 30 years ago with the addiction model in mind. Are you coming? What's this? I have such compulsive eating behavior. A lot of my girls have it. So when I talk to them and I say, look, do you ever start eating things that when you start, you can't stop, you feel crazy, you start putting yourself down, you know, we beat ourselves up, and there's always quite a few hands that go up. When they hear you talk that way, you touch something within them because they recognize the truth. And that's part of why I believe we've been so successful. We bring in healthy foods or we do something called sugar shock. And the girls really start seeing how much sugar is in foods. They're not even aware the sugar is there. So it's a whole process of changing their mind. There's plenty of healthy, tasty, amazing food. The biggest issue is getting the kids to want it. And to be an energy up girl, you don't have to eat it, but you have to try it. Who else? Anybody else ready to read one? OK, over here. I am happy. I am healthy. Chili sauce is not the box. Matter of fact, it will get you lost. Woo! I like that one. We're up against some serious things, but we're making serious change. We're doing it. I'm proud of you. I don't know, as the system becomes aware of really how successful we are, we may get more of a problem. I mean, First Lady, you know, Michelle Obama, just move is wonderful, but I think if she ever said less sugar, she'd probably be chased out of Washington. I mean, these, you know, there's some powerful forces to keep things the way they are. We've been in the school system going on 10 years. And two years ago, I started saying to our team, I said, look, if we can't get sugar out of the schools, what are we doing? So we started looking for a school. Good evening, everybody. Nice to see you all. I hope you're all ready to go sugar free. That's. Woo! So we're very excited about this initiative. Um, our plan is to go sugar free in partnership with Energy Up, High Voltage, and the Young Women's Leadership Network. There's a mood going on out there. Up until recently, the idea of getting sugar out of schools, you would have been laughed out of town. Two years ago, they took all the soda machines out in the schools and they put in Snapple. What do we think about that? What's in here? This is uh, four scoops of the sugar. Four scoops Number. of sugar in this one Snapple. This is the reality. It is soda. It is Coca-Cola. They are all the same. So all of these things that they're feeding us, we don't have to keep buying it. That's what this is about. We are here in Astoria, Queens. We are going to make history. What makes this school so unique? Uh, when we were looking for the school to be sugar free, I knew the importance of parent participation would be. And I was told that we'd have a very good opportunity of getting quite a few parents involved. 
in order to really change this, in order to get sugar out of our schools, you have to get the kids on board, you have to get the parents on board. That's what we're doing here in Astoria. It's, it's everybody on board. There's a new game in town, okay? What we're gonna do right off the bat, we're getting chocolate milk and sweetened milk out of our schools. Chocolate milk is a liquid candy bar. Gone! Kick it to the curb. So obvious sugar's out first. We spoke with a uh, school food and they're gonna come up with recipes and work with us. And an important thing that we're changing, not selling sugar products to raise money. Parents, you're the key to this. We want you to work with the girls to get their energy up. If we want it to be a full school community movement um, so that they can, at home, support the work that we're doing here. Uh, I feel good. I was excited to attend this program. I'm very proud. I heard about this program and I try to lose weight and I try to protect my kids. After attending this event, I will be changing the diet at home to, to eliminate the sugar um, and to get my daughters healthier. our food. We can enrich our lives. We can help our kids have the best grades, the most confidence. That's what we want. So that was a clip from Fed Up showing what solution can look like in the inner city schools. Voltage, why don't you talk about what it's like to be considered one of the biggest influences in the city? Well, first of all, watching that clip and seeing um, the first school that they showed in Brooklyn, actually the backdrop here, that's um, the school that really did um, the energy up backboard that, that we're using for this show. Uh, and seeing the girls is just unbelievably moving and exciting to me. Um, as I said, and I've said it many, many times, once I got sober from alcohol, I recognized my eating behavior to be the same. So I recognized addiction a very long time ago. And it's interesting, Jackie, because um, now when I meet different scientists and doctors, they're like, Voltage, how did you know this 35 years ago? How did you figure this out? And I said, well, what I am, because of my addictive issues, I recognize the brain chemistry. In terms of the holiday season, yes. for example, how Which do you makes think? Makes me crazy. <laughs> how do you think that the whole um, sugar industry has impacted us? How do you think? Well, they've used holidays as a vehicle for getting us as consumers to buy more stuff. Between buying the Valentine's Day card, you must go out for a special dinner, and you have to buy candy and gifts. It's everything is just turning us into a consumer, but the sugar industry drives it because they're a multi-billion dollar industry. So it's all the candies and the alcohol and, and the drinks. And as you said, it's all holidays. It has nothing to do with caring for your loved one. When I was a kid, Valentine's Day, if you didn't have a boyfriend, boy, you were a very unhappy you know, person. And oh, I was know. <laughs> much more towards that but today mm -hmm. it's all about in the sugar savvy valentine's it's all about being whole yourself mm -hmm. and you know mirror mirror on the wall who do i love most of all look in your eyes mm -hmm. me we need to take care of ourselves and love ourselves two halves just make two halves yeah so all of our holidays whether it's easter christmas halloween forget about it that's why we created shocktober it's just candy more 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 so when you say like oh for valentine's day i'm gonna give you a box of chocolates what if you eat only two but just two eats? because that's a recommended right well, two serving sizes is great if you had two pieces of chocolate and that was it for the day and you weren't out eating chocolate eating sugar from morning till night if you're not a sugar addict just like everybody's not everybody's an alcoholic if you can use sugar responsibly no more than 24 grams in 24 hours by all means enjoy of course so now we're going to show you some of the popular products that are sold on valentine's day to give to your loved one friend or family member what are you really giving them Ooh, it's kind of frightening take a look so today we're going to be sugar shocking you on one of the biggest holidays that's coming up valentine's day 
It is expected that Americans will spend $1.6 billion on sugar alone on this Valentine's Day. And that's coming from uh, the USDA, the, the nutrition guides uh, across America, and it's ridiculous. So we're here, I'm here to shock you today on what products you're actually giving each other for Valentine's Day. Let's find out. So let's start off with Godiva. Godiva is one of the biggest chocolate sellers in the world. So not just the United States, in the world. So in a Godiva 27 box piece, there are 42.75 teaspoons. That comes out to 171 grams. So they recommend that you have two pieces per box. Two pieces is 19 grams of sugar. So if you want to stay moderate, two pieces is fine for the entire day. But are you only having these chocolates? Or are you having juice? Are you having soda? Are you having sweet tea? Are you having any other form of sugar besides fruit or dairy products that are adding to your 24 grams of 24 hours? So basically, when you give someone a Valentine's Day gift of a Godiva chocolate box, what are you giving them? This. This is what you're giving them. So, <laughs> so it's either you eat this entire box by yourself or you share it with friends or you have two at a time. But eventually, when you finish the box, all of this will be in your system. Let's move on. So there is this new thing that's been coming out in the past few years with M&M's. Personalized M&M's. Let's put your face on M&M's. Let's put a message. I love you. Be my Valentine. How much sugar are you actually giving them when you give them your personalized M&M's? Oof, there's so much sugar in here, it's blocking the number. 288 grams of sugar in a pound of M&M's. 72 teaspoons. The ball itself is a one pound bag of personalized messages. You're giving them personalized heart disease and diabetes. What are you doing, man? Like this isn't, this is basically the entire box of M&Ms that you're giving. Just like that, here. Happy Valentine's Day, I love you. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what you're doing. But you know, moderation, right? We're talking about moderation. 24 grams in 24 hours. So if you give them the box of M&Ms, eventually that whole box will be consumed. So this is just for one day. This can be in like, this, this would be consumed probably in a week, which is terrible. <laughs> this is really bad, guys. Um, the next thing that's very popular is the Dunkin' Donuts cookie donut. You know, the one shaped as a heart. I love you, take, I'm giving you a heart. It's made of dough and sweetness. Oh, it's great. That has 29 grams of sugar in it. <laughs> You're going over the limit of 24 grams. So right there, your sweet gift is causing pain <laughs> and problems really fast. So, and the last product we have on here is Russell Stover's. Russell Stover's is very easy to find in Dwayne Reed, CVS, Hallmark, wherever you're going. Last minute gift to give to your friend. What are you giving your friend? Almost the same amount as you're giving in the Godiva box. 199.5 grams of sugar. That's 49 close to 50 teaspoons of sugar of 21 assorted chocolates. So it's similar to the Godiva in the sense that it's the same kind of serving size, but it's also the same damage. So either you eat two a day, but eventually you'll end up with this amount of sugar in your system for the entire box. So this is sickness, diabetes, health problems. This is moderation. Consume consciously. That's all we're asking you to do. And we're just trying to shock you in the fact that the sugar industry has hijacked all of our holidays. And Valentine's Day is just the fourth. We can make change. All right. Sugar is America's number one drug. It's taking our neighborhoods down. It's taking our kids' futures down. It's robbing people. Look, we're, we're in America. We truly can do anything we want. Anybody can be anything here, but if you're not fit and you're being set up for type 2 diabetes, heart disease, cancer, by the time you're 40 and 50 years old, that's not what we want for you and it doesn't have to be your future. The science is backing up what we've been talking about for mm -hmm. a very long time and that's what the film Fed Up is all about. It's meant for the country to literally get fed up and not just keep accepting and becoming the victims that we are acting like. Because again, 
Once you have the education to know that sugar's driving all these diseases, nobody's got a gun at your head to keep consuming it. So Ring the Alarm was created to wake you up to these facts. But now that you have the information, it, it is on you to do something about it. And that's what our school programs are about. That's what our community mm -hmm. programs are about. And I couldn't be prouder of you, Jackie. It was, it was difficult, you know, it was difficult to find that community of people that were interested in health. And I found that in my high school through the Energy Up program. So finding that really has helped me continue on a healthier path, mentally, physically, uh, and emotionally, I think. Um, which is basically the program has the five points, which is affirmations, gratitude, water, food, and exercise. So those are the five points of the Energy Up program, and it really makes sense because it keeps a balance in your life. And through this, I think I've become a better person for it. And you're becoming a leader in the movement, which is what I am so excited about, and it's why the show Ring the Alarm is meant to ring the alarm to the fact that we've given our power away. The good news is we can take it back. Mm. And creating Sugar Savvy Sisterhood. The book is called The Sugar Savvy Solution, but you need a group of people around you. Again, when I got sober, AA played a big part in my life. So basically, the elements of Sugar Savvy, Energy Up First, and then of course Sugar Savvy Now, were built on AA. And I cannot express how important it is to surround yourself with like-minded people because we all know that we're very affected by positive people and mm -hmm. positive people and energy and then you feel the energy. Well, the same is true in the other direction. So you have to guard yourself. You have to guard your energy. And this six-week program and Jackie and her mom taking this on to produce this, I got involved because I really want to see you take it and work it to its extent. I'm getting ready to also move on in different ways and Jackie I'm really looking forward to you playing a very big role in the Sugar Savvy Solution here in New York. I was so proud of mm -hmm. how you oh, you did the Sugar Shock Board yeah. and you get it. You've been hearing this and participating with it for many many years now and we're just going to keep pushing it out there but it's you know I love that people don't argue with me anymore yeah. because for the first 20 years you know I spent a lot of time arguing with registered dietitians and doctors and all sorts of people. Oh, Baltis, that's ridiculous. You know, sugar can't be a drug. You know, it's not, you know, it's in your genes. It's, it's, you know, you're a victim to who your parents are. It's bull, okay? You parents, we eat alike. That's what runs in the families. I mean, I broke a cycle of obesity. Anybody can do that. And Jackie, you and your mom, I'm just, I couldn't be more proud of you. You are truly <laughs> sugar savvy sisters. Well, we try, you know. <laughs> um, it takes a, it, It's a lot better with a support system, of course. But going into that, what was it like growing up in such a system that didn't really have an idea about sugar moderation and sugar being toxic and all these different types of things? What, how, was it, how has it changed dramatically over the past few years? Well, back in the day, people really did not know. Um, I can actually remember when doctors wrote, for, you know, said, well, if you're a little bit nervous, have a cigarette, you know, smoke. I mean, we had no idea about tobacco, about sugar, what we know about today. And when I was younger and your age, I was still so involved with drinking and getting high, uh, food wasn't really an issue. But once I got sober, and started looking around. And again, my interest was me to be okay. Mm -hmm. The Sugar Savvy Solution program is what saved my life because I was such a sugar addict and such a food addict. I didn't understand it before and that's mm -hmm. why I became bulimic. And I think a lot of girls, it's interesting because bulimia does not exist almost in urban neighborhoods. Mm. Where um, in New York and the Upper East Side, that's one of the biggest issues, bulimia and anorexia. In the urban communities, it's not, not so not much so at all. Not so much a problem. But it's starting to change because we're adjusting to obesity. Right. You know, babies got back was not something, you know, everybody wanted. Like, every the women now have been brainwashed into thinking that, it, you know, having a high BMI somehow is sexy mm. and love your I believe that you need to love yourself no matter what but don't use it to accept illness and disease and that's what we've been fighting against for so many years 
on some levels, Jackie, it's getting much better. So now we're going to do our top 10 sugar savvy facts about what's been going on in the sugar industry on Valentine's Day and just in general on a global scale. So let's start off. Okay, scary stuff. Number one, we all consume over 200 calories more in carbohydrates than we did 25 years ago. And we all weigh 25 pounds more today than we did 25 years ago, according to my buddy, Dr. Lustig. Guess what? It's true. Eesh. Number two, sugar can suppress the immune system, lead to ovarian cancer, increase the risk of gastric cancer, contribute to Alzheimer's disease, and cause depression. Stated by Suicide by Sugar by Nancy Appleton and J.N. Jacobs. She's been around for a very long time also. That's another pioneer. Number three, one can of soda a day equals 50 pounds of sugar every year. This leads to a personal gain of 15.6 pounds of fat per year, according to New York City Health Department, 2011. It's ridiculous. Americans spend $1.6 billion, that's billion with a B, <laughs> on sweet-related products on St. Valentine's Day alone, from a CNN report in 2013. Scary stuff. Number five. Americans consume 152 pounds of sugar per person per year, Oof, according to the U.S. Census Bureau. Whew. St. Valentine's Day is the fourth biggest holiday of sugar consumption. The fourth. The first is Halloween, and then Easter, and then Christmas, according to the National Confectioners Association. Hmm. They, they actually admit it. Seven, insulin resistance can occur in any organ. Res resistance in muscles is considered diabetes. Resistance in the liver is considered fatty liver disease. Resistance in the ovaries is considered polycystic ovary disease. And resistance in the brain is considered Alzheimer's disease. According to the television show, The Fifth Estate, in a segment called The Secrets of Sugar. As we say, sugar drives disease. Number eight, Americans ingest 1.7 million tons or 10.8 pounds of sugar per person per year. Number nine, there are at least 61 names for sugar, according to Dr. Lustig. And most of you have seen them all. And number 10, in 2009, the current U.S. annual consumption of high fructose corn syrup. High fructose corn syrup is another name for sugar but not just sugar alone. High fructose corn syrup was 63 pounds per person in 2009. This is according to Dr. Robert Lustig. Um, it's, it's, it, we're consuming toxic amounts of sugar. It's the truth, it's dangerous, and it must stop. It's extremely frightening, and we have to do something about it. It's time for you to wake up. We're ringing the alarm for you to wake up. Thank you for joining us today, and this Valentine's Day, why not cook for your loved one? Cook for each other instead of going out to a fancy restaurant and spending a lot of money on wine, on food, everything that you can just make yourself and make in a sugar-savvy way. So here's one of the recipes for you to take with you today. All right, Jackie, what's up in the kitchen? So today, in our Sugar Savvy book, we're turning to page 202 and going to the chicken enchilada recipe. Cool, what do we have in this so, today? we're gonna be using chicken, corn tortillas, and if you don't like using corn tortillas, you can use lettuce as a substitute to wrap the enchiladas. Cool idea. We're gonna be using grape tomatoes, Chili powder, cumin, avocado, green pepper, yellow onion, black so beans. All of this is in our amazing new book, The Sugar Savvy Solution. Yes, everything is on page 202. Energy up! Woo! So now I'm just cutting up the pepper and the onion, and I'm soon gonna measure out however much is needed for this recipe. Because what's really important in The Sugar Savvy Solution, the formulas are really broken down so you get a very well-balanced meal. That's why we're going to be measuring everything out so people can see what we're doing. Cool? Cool. One of the most important things, Jackie, that we talk about all the time in Chigar Savvy is the importance of taking our power back and controlling the food that we eat, meaning we need to cook. 
So Jackie, we're showing portion sizes now for one portion. So what are you doing there? So I'm just measuring out how much pepper is required for this recipe for one person. And it's one fourth a cup. This is one fourth of a cup of yellow onion chopped up. And Jackie, even though garlic is not in this recipe, if you love garlic the way we do, you can put it in anything. It is truly a superfood. Jackie, this is one ounce for the serving. That's why it's so important to have a scale and measure up. And don't forget, the sugar savvy way of eating is four to five meals, small meals a day. And this is a small meal. It's just that your eyes are so accustomed to large portions that this seems impossible, but it's not. This is one ounce of chicken. This is the half a cup of black beans that we're going to put into our chicken enchiladas. I'm just putting one fourth a teaspoon of each of the chili powder and the, the cumin. But basically this is what they say to taste? Yeah. Cool. All right. And just sprinkle it all over everything? Yep. Got it. Same thing with the chili pepper? Yep. All right. Got it. Yummy. So now we have one half of a cup of diced up cherry tomatoes. Now I'm just gonna cut up the avocado and then measure it into a tablespoon for our topping. Putting our enchilada and putting the toppings of the tomato and the avocado in. And so now, you're just wrapping done. it up as a... Enchilada. And it's in our book and it looks yummy. Bon appetit! Instead of using the corn tortilla, I don't really like eating corn that much. So I decided to get some lettuce instead. And if you get pieces big enough, you can make your own enchiladas with lettuce rather than with corn tortillas. Well, that's wonderful. And for many people, grains make it very difficult to lose weight. So if you find you're one of those persons, as you're losing weight, anytime you cut the grains out, make sure you really kind of load up on more veggies. But this looks amazing. Great job, Jackie. Jackie G in the kitchen. Love it. Woo! So hopefully take this recipe with you so you can share with your loved ones, friends, or family. Thank you for joining us today, and we hope to see you next time. And remember, I am happy, I am healthy, and this holiday season, I'm going to take care of me. Energy up. Woo!